cute this little guy. What a cute handheld. Yeah, it has a flaw that kind of ruins it, but you looked past it. Because the LCD is amazing, and the emulation's not so bad either. But you're frustrated. I get it. <laughs> The people over at Mayu didn't add your favorite console. Don't worry, Mayu. Don't break a sweat. Sit back. I'll put all the work in and help your customers add emulators to the Mayu Mini Plus. Okay, so technically we're not adding emulators to the Mayu Mini Plus. Because they're already preloaded on the SD card that came shipped with the Mayu Mini Plus. We're just simply adding an icon to the game section, which then links to the ROMs and then tells those ROMs which emulators to use to run. First order of business is to take the SD card out of the Mayo Mini Plus. Now make sure that the Mayo Mini Plus is turned off before you do this and then pop the SD card into your PC. I want to throw out a little disclaimer. Be careful during this whole process because these SD cards that are always shipped with these Chinese handhelds are cheap and very easily can be damaged or corrupt, which this dummy did while trying to add Sega 32X. I don't know what I did, but somehow during the process, I messed something up. And when you put the SD card in the Mayo Mini Plus, it wouldn't load any of the ROMs. But if this does happen to happen to you, don't worry, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix this. Mayo has already provided a Game Gear ROM set folder. So I don't exactly know why they didn't put this in the menu, but this is a great place for us to start. First, look for the MU folder in the root of the SD card. Here's where all the emulator menu folders are stored. And since Game Gear uses the Pico Drive emulator, we can make a copy of the Mega Drive folder. Rename the folder to GG. Now open the folder and locate the config file. Right click and open it with Notepad. Now change all the MD in the script to GG and click Save. If we put the SD card back in the Mayo Mini after unmounting it from your PC, we should now see a Game Gear option in the Games menu. Now if we're looking to add Sega 32X, it's kind of the same process since it runs on the Pico Driver emulator as well. Copy the MD folder in the MU folder once again and edit the config file. This time change all the MD to Sega 32X and save. Before unmounting the SD card and popping it into your Mayu, we have to create a ROMs folder. Because obviously if you don't, there's absolutely no games for it to load. Duh. Back out to the root of the SD card, click on the ROMs folder, create a new folder and rename it Sega 32X. Make sure that you're naming this all the same and that that was the exact name that you put in the config file or none of this will load. This is where you will copy all the 32X games. Now originally I was gonna point out Sega 32X ran like complete crap. And soon as I started recording this video and some B-roll, I realized that if you have the Wi-Fi on, some of the emulators will suffer. Here's another flaw that I just noticed. Look, this is Lynx and the game's freezing. On the two here. As you can see, look, it's hosed up. Wi Fi's on, as you can see, Wi Fi's on there. I'm gonna turn the Wi Fi off. And the game is running perfectly fine. So when you're playing games, Keep the Wi-Fi off. Now let's say you want to get an emulator that doesn't involve the Pico drive because it's all I've been doing. Hey, it was easy. Well, it's quite simple. Remember when I said that the emulators were already preloaded on the SD card? Of course you do because you've been playing, playing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because you were paying attention the whole time and you have the memory of a very sharp-witted large elephant. I, 
I don't know where that analogy came from. It just sounded good while I was writing the script. Go back to the root of the SD card. Open the RetroArch folder, then .RetroArch, and then the core folder. In this folder, you will find all the emulators loaded to the SD card. Find which one you want and copy the name. For example, the Atari Lynx, which is the handy underscore libretto.so. We're going to find the most similar handheld to it, which I picked the Wonderswan color. Copy the folder and rename it to Lynx, all capitals. Inside the folder, you once again want to change the config file to match the one on screen. and also the launch file. Now go into the ROMs folder, new folder, and rename it Links. Once again, all capitals. Drag all your Links ROMs here, and enjoy. Okay, so unfortunately, you kind of messed up like this guy. During the whole process, for some reason, something got messed up and now the games folder won't load or worse, the SD card won't load at all. The only option I can see for this is formatting the SD card. Now, hopefully you have your ROM set saved somewhere else because at the end of this, there will be no more ROMs on this SD card. To format the SD card, you want to download an app called Rufus. After that app is downloaded and installed, you want to open it up, pop your SD card inside your PC, select the correct SD card. If you have other SD cards or thumb drives hooked to your PC, it's going to bring those up. Make sure you don't format the wrong one. So check multiple times. This guy has done that far too often. In the drop down menu, you're going to want to select non bootable. You could name the label if you want, and you're going to want to pick FAT32 as the file system and click format. After the SD card is formatted, you're going to want to head to the link that I have in the description to the Mayo Mini Plus's manufacturer's website, which is also in the settings on the Mayo Mini Plus. There, you're going to want to download the SD cards image. After you download this image, you're going to want to unzip it and copy those files straight over to the SD card, pop it back in the Mayo Mini Plus, and it'll go. Now, before you do that, you want to put your ROMs in there, but if you want to check to see if it works, you can do that and always pop it back out and back into your PC, but that's the way you fix it. If you're confused by any of that, by all means, there's a comment section for a reason. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. This tutorial was obviously for those who want to stick with the OS that came shipped on the SD card, but just want to add emulators and games. However, the OS currently on the SD card that shipped with the Mayo Mini Plus is lacking some very useful features and occasionally might suffer from some emulation issues. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at three things you should be doing when you first get your Mayo Mini Plus. And one of them is updating to the most current version of Onion OS, which makes adding emulators a whole lot easier. Thanks for watching, and as for now, I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, instead of staring at my ugly mug, why don't you go ahead and check out one of our other videos? One. Two, I'll wait, my busted face ain't going nowhere.